I can remember Bertrand Russell telling me of a horrible dream. He was in the top floor of the university library, about A.D. 2100. A library assistant was going round the shelves carrying an enormous bucket, taking down books, glancing at them, restoring them to the shelves or dumping them into the bucket. At last he came to three large volumes which Russell could recognize as the last surviving copy of Principia Mathematica. He took down one of the volumes, turned over a few pages, seemed puzzled for a moment by the curious symbolism, closed the volume, balanced it in his hand and hesitated. Hardy, H. 1940, A Mathematician's Apology, Cambridge, University Press, p. 83. ISBN 9780521427067. The Principia Mathematica is a three-volume work on the foundations of mathematics, written by Alfred North Whitehead and Bertrand Russell and published in 1910, 1912, and 1913. In 1927, it appeared in a second edition with an important introduction to the second edition. An Appendix A that replaced 9 in an all-new Appendix C, PM, as it is often abbreviated, was an attempt to describe a set of axioms and inference rules in symbolic logic from which all mathematical truths could in principle be proven. As such, this ambitious project is of great importance in the history of mathematics and philosophy being one of the foremost products of the belief that such an undertaking may be achievable. However, in 1931, Gödel's incompleteness theorem proved definitively that PM, and in fact any other attempt, could never achieve this lofty goal, that is, for any set of axioms and inference rules proposed to encapsulate mathematics. Either the system must be inconsistent, or there must in fact be some truths of mathematics which could not be deduced from them. One of the main inspirations and motivations for PM was the earlier work of Gottlob Frege on logic, which Russell discovered allowed for the construction of paradoxical sets. PM sought to avoid this problem by ruling out the unrestricted creation of arbitrary sets. This was achieved by replacing the notion of a general set with the notion of a hierarchy of sets of different types. A set of a certain type only allowed to contain sets of strictly lower types. Contemporary mathematics, however, avoids paradoxes such as Russell's in less unwieldy ways, such as the system of de mello frankel set theory. PM is not to be confused with Russell's 1903 Principles of Mathematics. PM states, the present work was originally intended by us to be comprised in a second volume of Principles of Mathematics, but as we advanced, it became increasingly evident that the subject is a very much larger one than we had supposed moreover on many fundamental questions which had been left obscure and doubtful in the former work. We have now arrived at what we believe to be satisfactory solutions. The Modern Library placed it 23rd in a list of the top 100 English language, non-fiction books of the 20th century. Scope of Foundations Laid The Principia covered only set theory, cardinal numbers, ordinal numbers, and real numbers. Deep of theorems from real analysis were not included but by the end of the third volume it was clear to experts that a large amount of known mathematics could in principle be developed in the adopted formalism. It was also clear how lengthy such a development would be. A fourth volume on the foundations of geometry had been planned, but the authors admitted to intellectual exhaustion upon completion of the third theoretical basis. As noted in the criticism of the theory by Kurt Gödel, unlike a formalist theory, the logistic theory of PM has no precise statement of the syntax of the formalism. Another observation is that almost immediately in the theory, interpretations are presented in terms of truth values for the behavior of the symbols, tilde, and v, truth values. PM embeds the notions of truth and falsity in the notion primitive proposition. A raw formalist theory would not provide the meaning of the symbols that form a primitive proposition. The symbols themselves could be absolutely 
arbitrary and unfamiliar. The theory would specify only how the symbols behave based on the grammar of the theory. Then later, by assignment of values, a model would specify an interpretation of what the formulas are saying. Thus in the formal clean symbol set below, the interpretation of what the symbols commonly mean, and by implication how they end up being used, is given in parentheses, e.g. But this is not a pure formalist theory. Contemporary construction of a formal theory The following formalist theory is offered as contrast to the logicistic theory of PM. A contemporary formal system would be constructed as follows. Symbols used. This set is the starting set, and other symbols can appear but only by definition from these beginning symbols. A starting set might be the following set derived from clean 1952. Logical symbols, and, v, predicate symbol, equals, function symbols, plus, individual symbol, zero, variables, a, b, c, etc., and parentheses. Symbol strings. The theory will build, strings, of these symbols by concatenation. Formation rules. The theory specifies the rules of syntax usually as a recursive definition that starts with zero and specifies how to build acceptable strings or well-formed formulas. This includes a rule for substitution of strings for the symbols called variables. Transformation rule. The axioms that specify the behaviors of the symbols and symbol sequences. Rule of inference. Detachment. Modus ponens. The rule that allows the theory to detach a conclusion from the premises that led up to it and thereafter to discard the premises. If this were not the case, then substitution would result in longer and longer strings that have to be carried forward. Indeed, after the application of modus ponens, nothing is left but the conclusion, the rest disappears forever. Contemporary theories often specify as their first axiom the classical or modus ponens or the rule of detachment. A, A, B, B the symbol is usually written as a horizontal line, here means implies. The symbols A and B are stand-ins for strings. This form of notation is called an axiom schema. This can be read in a manner similar to if then but with a difference. Given symbol string if A and A implies B then B. But the symbols have no interpretation, and modus ponens proceeds mechanistically, by grammar alone. Construction The theory of PM has both significant similarities, and similar differences, to a contemporary formal theory. Clean states that, this deduction of mathematics from logic was offered as intuitive axiomatics. The axioms were intended to be believed, or at least to be accepted as plausible hypotheses concerning the world. Indeed, unlike a formalist theory that manipulates symbols according to rules of grammar, PM introduces the notion of truth values, i.e., truth and falsity in the real-world sense, and their assertion of truth almost immediately as the fifth and sixth elements in the structure of the theory. 1. Variables 2. Uses of various letters. 3. The fundamental functions of propositions. The contradictory function, symbolized by tilde, and the logical sum or disjunctive function, symbolized by being taken as primitive and logical. Implication defined as PQ equals tilde PQDF, and logical product defined as PQ equals tilde DF. 4. Equivalence. Logical equivalence, not arithmetic equivalence, given as a demonstration of how the symbols are used, i.e., thus PQ stands for. Notice that to discuss a notation PM identifies a meta notation with space. Space. Logical equivalence appears again as a definition. PQ equals. Notice the appearance of parentheses. This grammatical usage is not specified and appears sporadically. Parentheses do play an important role in symbol strings, however, e.g., the notation for the contemporary x. 5. Truth values. The truth value of a proposition is truth if it is true, and falsehood if it is false. 6. Assertion sign. P may be read, it is true that, thus, 
P, Q, means it is true that P implies Q, whereas, P, Q, means P is true, therefore Q is true. The first of these does not necessarily involve the truth either of P or of Q, while the second involves the truth of both. 7. Inference. PM, S version of modus ponens, if, P, and, have occurred, then, Q, will occur if it is desired to put it on record. The process of the inference cannot be reduced to symbols. Its sole record is the occurrence of, Q, in other words, the symbols on the left disappear or can be erased. 8. The use of dots. 9. Definitions. These use the equals sign with df at the right end. 10. Summary of preceding statements. Brief discussion of the primitive ideas, tilde p, and pq, and prefix to a proposition. 11. Primitive propositions. The axioms or postulates. This was significantly modified in the second edition. 12. Propositional functions. The notion of proposition was significantly modified in the second edition, including the introduction of atomic propositions linked by logical signs to form molecular propositions, and the use of substitution of molecular propositions into atomic or molecular propositions to create new expressions. 13. The range of values and total variation. 14. Ambiguous assertion and the real variable. This and the next two sections were modified or abandoned in the second edition. In particular, the distinction between the concepts defined in sections 15, definition and the real variable and 16 propositions connecting real and apparent variables was abandoned in the second edition. 17. Formal implication and formal equivalence. 18. Identity. 19. Classes and relations. 20. Various descriptive functions of relations. 21. Plural descriptive functions. 22. Unit classes. Primitive ideas cf. pm 1962-90-94 for the first edition. Elementary propositions. Elementary propositions of functions. Assertion, introduces the notions of truth and falsity. Assertion of a propositional function. Negation, if P is any proposition, the proposition, not P, or, P is false, will be represented by, tilde P. Disjunction, if P and Q are any propositions, the proposition, P or Q, i.e., either P is true or Q is true, where the alternatives are to be not mutually exclusive, will be represented represented by PQ. Primitive propositions The first edition begins with a definition of the sign 1.01 PQ equals tilde PQ DF 1.1. Anything implied by a true elementary proposition is true. PP modus ponens 1.2 PP P PP principle of tautology 1.3 Q PQ PP principle of addition 1.4, PQ, QP, PP principle of permutation 1.5, P, Q, PP associative principle 1.6, QR, PQ, PR, PP principle of summation 1.7, if P is an elementary proposition, tilde P is an elementary proposition. PP 1.71, if P and Q are elementary propositions, PQ is an elementary proposition. PP 1.72, if Phi P and Psi P are elementary propositional functions which take elementary propositions as arguments, Phi P Psi P is an elementary proposition. PP together with the introduction to the second edition, the second edition's appendix A abandons the entire section 9. This includes six primitive propositions 9 through 9.15 together with the axioms of reducibility. The revised theory is made difficult by the introduction of the Sheffer stroke to symbolize incompatibility, the contemporary logical NAND. In the revised theory, the introduction presents the notion of atomic proposition, a datum, that belongs to the philosophical part of logic. 
These have no parts that are propositions and do not contain the notions all or some. For example, this is red or this is earlier than that. Such things can exist ad finitum, i.e., even an infinite enumeration of them to replace generality. PM then, advance, s, to molecular propositions that are all linked by the stroke. Definitions give equivalences for, tilde, and, the new introduction defines, elementary propositions as atomic and molecular positions together. It then replaces all the primitive propositions 1.2 to 1.72 with a single primitive proposition framed in terms of the stroke. If P, Q, R are elementary propositions, given P and P, we can infer R. This is a primitive proposition. The new introduction keeps the notation for there exists and for all. Appendix A strengths the notion of matrix or predicative function and presents four new primitive propositions as 8.18.1388. Multiplicative axiom 120. Axiom of infinity ramified types and the axiom of reducibility. In simple type theory objects are elements of various disjoint types. Types are implicitly built up as follows. If tau 1, tau m are types then there is a type that can be thought of as the class of propositional functions of tau 1, tau m. In particular there is a type of individuals from which other types are built. Russell and Whitehead's notation for building up types from other types is rather cumbersome, and the notation here is due to Church. In the ramified type theory of PM all objects are elements of various disjoint ramified types. Ramified types are implicitly built up as follows. If tau 1, tau m, sigma 1, sigma n are ramified types then as in simple type theory there is a type of predicative propositional functions of tau 1, tau m, sigma 1, sigma n. However, there are also ramified types that can be thought of as the classes of propositional functions of tau 1, tau m obtained from propositional functions of type by quantifying over sigma 1, sigma n. When n equals 0 these propositional functions are called predicative functions or matrices. This is can be confusing because current mathematical practice does not distinguish between predicative and non-predicative functions. And in any case PM never defines exactly what a predicative function actually is. This is taken as a primitive notion. Russell and Whitehead found it impossible to develop mathematics while maintaining the difference between predicative and non-predicative functions. So introduced the axiom of reducibility, saying that for every non-predicative function there is a predicative function taking the same values. In practice this axiom essentially means that the elements of type can be identified with the elements of type, which causes the hierarchy of ramified types to collapse down to simple type theory. In Zermelo set theory one can model the ramified type theory of PM as follows. One picks a set iota to be the type of individuals. For example, iota might be the set of natural numbers, or the set of atoms or any other set one is interested in. Then if tau 1, tau m are types, the type is the power set of the product tau 1 times, times tau m, which can also be thought of informally as the set of functions from this product were two elements set, true, false. The ramified type can be modeled as the product of the type with the set of sequences of n quantifiers indicating which quantifier should be applied to each variable sigma i. 